These antidepressant drugs are making me have blurred vision and constipation, dry throat, uh, foggy head. I'm a walking zombie, but hey, guess what? It beats depression. For today's program is entitled Depression, Their Drugs, and Alternatives. So stay by. Hi, welcome to Abundant Living. This is Curtis Akins, and this is my beautiful bride, Paula Akins. How are you doing today, honey? Wonderful. You doing fine? Wonderful. You look pretty good, too. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow, you sure named some heavy stuff when yeah. this thing began, this program. And we didn't cover all the symptoms, mm -hmm, and, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I think someone mentioned something else, but we left that one out. But there's a lot of symptoms dealing with um, depression and their drugs, so... Again, a lot of people, they have those things. And, uh, you know, you have to weigh out your benefit to risk ratio. Mm -hmm. The benefits outweigh the risk, then it may be advantageous. If the risk outweigh the benefits, then it may not be advantageous to take that medication. Well, you say in drugs and also alternative. I guess my first question, Curtis, to you would be, um, what's actually going on in the brain when a person is suffering from depression? Okay, now again, this is a uh, part of our running series of mental wellness. Mm -hmm. And last time we were um, on 3 ABM, we talked about um, depression and also unveiling the culprits. Sure. And so this time we're going to go more into uh, the brain, the drugs, and also some alternatives to those drugs as well. Now, in our presentations, when we go in the community, sometimes we have a card and it has three letters mm -hmm. K I S S. Now, some speakers who speak quite often know what I'm talking about. That's an acronym. You remember that acronym, honey? Mm -hmm. You want to? No, I, you got it going on with this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but K-I-S-S simply means keep it simple, stupid. Mm. Now, so therefore, this can be very in-depth as far as we're going to the brain. So we're going to keep it simple. Now, Smarty. Yeah, because see, what we've done, we changed the last S to Smarty because yes. it's more complimentary. Smarty. So yes, keep absolutely. it simple, Smarty. So this is what we're going to do. But we're going to the brain because there's something going on in the brain uh, that triggers, or not trigger, but it's the result of someone being depressed. Mm. And so with that in mind, we have what we call serotonin. Now, most people heard of the term, it's a neurotransmitter in the brain, serotonin. And when a person is experiencing depression, serotonin levels are low. Okay. When a person is not experiencing depression, have a, a good mood, or whatever, mm -hmm. then serotonin levels are high. And that's about as simple as I can get that, all right? So with that in mind, we call serotonin a, a mood regulator, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. And so with mm -hmm. that in mind, um, that's the reason for our serotonin. And so therefore, a lot of drugs are catering to boosting their serotonin levels. Now with that in mind also, of course, uh, you have a lot of side effects as I just mentioned at the right. opening as well. Okay. You have okay. the blurred vision, the constipation, the nausea, the dry throat, uh, a foggy feeling, uh, horrendous jitters, even suicidal thoughts. Mm. Now depression brings on suicidal thoughts. Some of the medication brings it on too. It's like a double whammy. But uh, again, that's what we're dealing with, with uh, some of those medications out there as well. Well, you're talking about the medication stuff, so what about drug therapy? Talk a little bit to us about that. Okay, uh, like I mentioned before, drug therapy is not as efficacious as we would like it to be in the medical profession. Mm -hmm. uh, antidepressant drugs has tripled in the last 10 years. Last year, some 200 million prescriptions were filled for antidepressant drugs, all right? So it's growing at a increasing rate. Now, with that in mind, it's only about half effective for those who are depressed. So antidepressants only works for about half of the people who are depressed out there. So um, the other half are not really receiving any real benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to serotonin, because a lot of these drugs really focuses on serotonin. Right to increase the serotonin level mm -hmm. in the brain itself. Mm -hmm. 
So with that in mind, we have what we call the SSRI, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, SSRI. These drugs target the serotonin. Therefore, in the the serotonin levels, therefore a person can have more of a better mood with those. Now, with those drugs, okay. those drugs are only 20 to 30 percent effective. Okay. So close to 70 percent of people who take an SSRI are not even really benefited from those type of drugs. Therefore, a lot of people say, hey, I have these drugs out there in the medical profession, antidepressant, SSRI, and they're not as effective. I still need some help. And uh, with that in mind, that's why a lot of people are moving more to the alternative route as far as drugs are concerned. So, and like I said before, uh, last week we were here, uh, women uh, experience more depression than men, two to four times more uh, than that. And um, a lot of times, uh, some of the pregnancy, uh, due to pregnancy, those who are depressed may take that medication. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. can also harm the fetal mm -hmm. as well. That's not so, good. Uh, therefore, we need some alternatives to depression drugs. When we speak about alternatives, I know we're often talking about alternatives now as a non-drug therapy. Mm -hmm. All right. So if it's um, a non-drug therapy or a way in which lifestyle or and or eating mm -hmm. could possibly take the place of the drug mm -hmm. or like, OK. Yes. So in that in that respect, you know, my first question is going to be to you. And that is, are there foods that are high in a serotonin level? OK. Now, that's a very good question, because since serotonin levels are low, mm -hmm. which is the trademark of those who are depressed, right. it seems to reason mm -hmm. if I eat foods high in serotonin, then my serotonin levels become higher. Okay. Well, that's not as easily said okay. because number one, foods high in serotonin, there are many foods that's high in serotonin. I'm not even going to mention them. The reason why is this. We can eat those foods high in serotonin, but because serotonin does not cross the blood-brain barrier, okay. then it does not affect serotonin levels. So we can eat oh, those foods, okay. but it does not okay. impact our serotonin levels. Okay. And that's why a lot of times, we're dealing with the food, we're dealing with the chemistry, the neurotransmitter in the brain. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. therefore, you cannot talk up serotonin. Mm -hmm. There must be something that one can take to boost the serotonin level. That's why with uh, depression, talk therapy has moved into drug therapy because mm -hmm. you cannot talk serotonin into right. someone's brain. True. True. So True. therefore, there's a shift as far as treatment is concerned. So with that in mind, now there are some uh, foods that has tryptophan. Now some people may have heard of that term. Mm -hmm. Tryptophan is an essential amino acid that is a precursor of serotonin. So when we eat foods that's high in tryptophan, therefore increases the serotonin, the mood regulator, therefore serotonin levels are increased. Mm -hmm. Now with that in mind, mm -hmm. there's foods high in tryptophan. Mm -hmm. Let's go to our first graph and see what those foods are. I'll call these foods the mood foods. Now the highest uh, food that has the highest kind of tryptophan is of course the soybeans. Okay. And of course soybeans, you also get tofu as well. Then you have the uh, spinach, fresh spinach, uh, the broccoli, steamed broccoli, uh, mustard greens, sesame seeds. All these are foods that's high in tryptophan, which is a precursor to serotonin. So those are the key foods that's high in tryptophan. And again, I have to emphasize that the soybean is number one as far as tryptophan is concerned. So we're taking those foods, then serotonin, which is the mood regulator, mm -hmm. helps for those who uh, may be depressed. What about natural supplements? Okay, now there's a lot of natural supplements out there on the market as well that people can take. And some of these natural supplements, I'm just going to mention too, there's many we can mention, alternatives to drugs and um, what drugs can do and shortcomings of drugs for depression. But uh, two are produced by the body, by the way. Uh, one is called 5-hydroxide tryptophan, 5-HTP. Let's go to our first graphic or our second graphic and let's see what this uh, particular supplement can do. We call this the nature's antidepressant. Of the 17 reviewed clinical studies, 13 confirmed that 5-HTP has true antidepressant
properties, 5-H-T-P. That stands for 5-hydroxytryptophan. All right, and again, this is another precursor mm -hmm. to serotonin. All right, okay. and so therefore, with that in mind, uh, people can do that. And uh, the doses, based on clinical studies, can range anywhere from 100 to 300 milligrams per day and suggest to take that in the evening no more than two months at a time. And a lot of people who've taken this found to be, um, have their uh, depression uh, symptoms either reduced or eliminated, all right? Finding any uh, health food store as far as 5-HTP. Uh, now there's another one mm -hmm. that's uh, very profound, has a lot of clinical studies back in this as well. Let's go to our last graph and let's see what this supplement can do as well. A proven track record in over 40 clinical studies, S-A-M-E, SAM-E, has demonstrated the ability to enhance both serotonin and dopamine levels, eliminating or decreasing symptoms of depression. Sam E sometimes is known. This is, again, this is producing the body. But again, uh, we can get this at any uh, health food store as well. And uh, this uh, Sam E, uh, the dosage with this is about 40, 400 milligrams mm -hmm. uh, twice a day. And this has been uh, used for over 40 years. It's been very efficacious for those who not receiving the benefits that they're hoping for in uh, depression's drugs but also this is another way of using some alternatives as far as that's concerned. So there's many things out there. I didn't even mention St. John's Wort. We know about that mm -hmm. uh, in Germany, by the way. I just mentioned this point right here, that in Germany, um, you know, Prozac, Zoloft, and uh, Paxil, those are the SSRIs, Selective uh, Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. In Germany, only 2% of the people in Germany use Prozac. Hmm. Over 60% use St. John's Wort hmm. and antidepressants. So again, they are using uh, a lot more natural remedies over there than we use here in the United States. But uh, so that's some of the things we can do. Uh, magnesium, 400 milligrams. It helps the brain cell connection. That's very efficacious. So a lot more we can offer, but just want to give them something they can go on as some, some alternatives to drug therapy. Now, should, going with the word of God, oh, go should, ahead. Should, should, because okay, somebody might be asking a question, that is that, are you talking about all three of these things at one time? Or are you talking about one or the other? Yes, um, very good question, yeah. Uh, norm, it, it just depends. Mm -hmm. Some people have very good results from just the 5-HTP by itself, okay. all right? And uh, some people use that with St. John's Wort. Or valerian okay. and you have to you know uh, work and see what works best for you other people just use st. John's Wort by itself because remember you have different degrees of depression you have mild you have moderate you have severe all right so you may have to also work with your dosage as well uh, and work with your healthcare professional Absolutely. so they can be aware that uh, you're doing those things as well so uh, again in the Sam E of course, uh, that's another way of uh, doing that. Some people find good results just by that alone and nothing mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. or a combination thereof. But again, Sam E and 5-HTP uh, are produced in the body in okay. a way. Okay. So therefore you don't have those adverse reactions that you would normally get from the drug medication. Now, going to the Word of God, because mm -hmm. I see our time slipping away. Time God has something away. to say about depression, and we're going to close up with another biblical example well, as well. Well, you know, in, in uh, Psalms 42, okay. uh, there's some statements that's being made, and it says, um, the soul cast down. Mm -hmm. So the Bible talks about that as well. And in Psalms 42, it says, my soul is cast down within me, and why art thou cast down, O oh, my soul? Oh, now, okay. you know, that whole chapter is dealing with this, of course, David's writing, and he's talking about the soul being cast down. And then I like the fact, because in the Word of God, even when something's going on, even when we hear a story, we will see that God's promises and God speaks also to us. And so here in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 7, 6, it says from God, mm -hmm. God is the God of comfort, and He comforts those who are cast down. Okay, amen. Now, speaking of God comforting yes. those who are cast down means that means we then need to go to the Word of God is also, okay. also. And 
you have a story about someone whose soul was cast down. Yeah, now, now I, I call this, we're going to close up on this one. I'll call this the prime example of biblical depression. Mm. The best example in the Word of God is housed in 1 Kings 18 and also verse 19. Now, we're talking about Elijah. And let me just kind of summarize the story. Some of you know the story, 1 Kings chapter 18. And uh, Elijah was a prophet by God, for God, mm -hmm. to the northern part of Israel. Mm -hmm. Of course, Israel, the northern part, they had apostatized and started worshiping other idols and worshiping Baal. So Elijah was sent there to straighten things out. And uh, Baal's prophets were about 450 plus another 400 in the grove. So looking at 950 mm -hmm. to 1. Okay. But Elijah with God yes. is the majority. Hey. So he had the majority on his side. Yes. And here's the deal. He said, okay, look, guys, we need to straight this thing out. You need to worship God. So let's go ahead and put this to a climax. On Mount Carmel, let's build an altar. You select the bullock, I'll select one. You go first. Put the bullock on the altar. And if fire comes down from heaven, burn up your bullock, then we know that your God is the true God. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go next. If it does the same with me, that we know that my God is the true God. So they went first, they had the bullock, had the altar there, and they started in the morning, noon, until the evening, and fire never came down. <laughs> and then uh, Elijah said, okay, I want everybody to come close. Okay. Now it's my turn. And he prepared uh, the bullock on the altar. And to make matters worse, he said, I want you to pour water and saturate the altar with water. Okay. Do it the second time. Okay. Do it the third time. So make no mistake about it. It was drenched wet with water. Then he called on God himself and fire came down, burned up the bullock, the altar, and also the water around the mercy, altar mercy, as well. Mercy, okay. And it was just amazing. But now there's something that happened because of that. And I want to read something. Again, we introduced this author before on our last program. And this book is called Prophets and Kings. Talking about a prime example of depression. After that event took place, this is what happened. He feared that the reformation that began on Mount Carmel might not be lasting. And, get this folks, depression seized him. Hmm. And he desired never again to look upon the face of man. So because of this grand event, but he feared that, wait a minute, this, this might not last. And that fear, that anticipation of fear that it might not last, depression seized him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One other thing that this author points out, uh, she says that because he was exalted above measure. Sure. And when that happened, then that author says, Elijah left hold of God's unchanging hand. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to fast forward this story. So when that happened and King Ahab told his wife Jezebel what had happened, Jezebel says, oh, Ahab said, Elijah's life, by this time tomorrow, Elijah, you're going to die. Uh -oh. He heard that and Elijah took off running. Uh -oh. We're going to pick up the story quickly in 1 Kings Chapter 19 and verse 4. Listen to this. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a Jupiter tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. One of the symptoms of depression is that you wish to die. You have no desire to live is Elijah wished that he would die. Another hallmark of depression is low self-esteem or worthlessness. He said here that I'm no better than my father's. And so therefore he went and uh, God um, took him and he went up on a mountain. Long story short, um, God came to Elijah on the mountain first in a hurricane, and then on an earthquake,
and then a fire. And then the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 and 12, then God came to Elijah in a still, small voice. At that point in time, this author says, depression was silenced Mercy. in a still, small voice. Mercy. So those who are watching, you may be depressed. You may know someone who is depressed, mm -hmm. going through those depressive symptoms in a still, small voice. Listen to God's call. Listen to the small voice of the Holy Spirit. And again, there's a sure remedy for depression. Faith, prayer, and work. Therefore, we want to give you those tools today to beat depression, to reach through the darkness into the glorious light. Now, that means that there is more to this depression because you've only just started touching the surface. Just touching the surface. Right, drugs yeah. and alternative and yes. a story about Elijah. There's so much I can be said about that, but we got to go in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to pick that up about how I'm feeling about that whole story because God is awesome once again. We're going into the kitchen and we're going to be doing an apple salad ambrosia. Get your paper and your pencil and meet us in the kitchen. <music> 